There is a phrase which says, ignorance is bliss. But don't we all want to become more intelligent with sharper brains? The work of neuroscientists is focused on understanding the very basis of intelligence. Why are some people smarter than the others? And is it possible to increase the intelligence in a human? Your education and your experience go a long way in expanding one's intelligence. But what we are talking about in this video is the fluid intelligence. It is your capacity to reason and solve problems and which has nothing to do with your past knowledge. Fluid intelligence includes the use of logic and reasoning to solve new problems. And according to Andrea Kowatsky, a behavior therapist, it is possible to increase your fluid intelligence. And these are the five ways you can do it. Geniuses like Einstein are skilled in multiple areas and constantly seeking out new activities, trying to learn a new domain. Kuwatsky explains how with each new activity you create new connections in the brain, which increases your general neural activity. This in turn creates more connections in the brain and constant learning is taking place. Constantly exposing yourself to new things puts your brain in an ideal state for learning. Novel things also trigger dopamine. Dopamine, as most of you know, kicks in motivation and also creates neurons that prepare your brain for new learning. All you have to do is feed the hunger. So to be an Einstein, always look for new activity, new domains to learn. Take up a guitar class, try to understand art, learn a new language, read up some new history or about some ancient practice. Engage your mind and expand your intelligence. Be a knowledge junkie. To train your brain, a lot of brain training games are promoted in the market. We believe that games like Sudoku help us to become sharper. Well, I got news for you. They don't work. Individual brain training games don't make you any smarter. It only helps you in making you more proficient at that game. Initially, it does serve the purpose of seeking novelty as mentioned in the first principle. But once you master the game, then you need to move on to the next challenge. If you learn to play Sudoku, then it is good. But now that you have mastered it, you have to move on to the next activity. You have to seek whatever challenges your brain. To stress this point, Kuwatsky cites a study that was done in 2007. Participants were asked to play a game which they had not played before. Being a novel activity, participants showed an increase in the cortical thickness and an increase in the cortical activity. Basically, the brain used up more glucose during the training which resulted in the thickness. Just like in the gym, when we bulk up as we train more. But once the participants became experts at the game, they showed a decline in the cortical thickness as well as the glucose used by the brain during the task. That is because the brain had become efficient in that game and was using less energy while playing the game. It didn't show any decrease in the skill of the participants while playing the game, but the cognitive energy and the glucose were now being used elsewhere. This shows that efficiency in a particular activity will not help you when it comes to cognitive or intellectual growth. For the brain to make new neural connections, you have to constantly challenge it and seek new activity. The brain has to be under some amount of stress and discomfort and efficiency is not your friend if you are looking to expand the horizons of your brain. Kowalski says that to achieve maximum potential of the brain, one must think creatively using both sides of the brain and not just relying on your analytical skills or conversely for that matter, using just your imagination. What she means is creative cognition happens when you use your conventional and unconventional thinking and are able to generate original ideas that help to accomplish the task at hand in the best way possible. Creative thinking doesn't mean doing a painting or playing a guitar. It means the artsy kind should also delve into science to have a broader perspective. And similarly, the number crunching guy should also use his or her imagination to solve a problem. One should be able to analyze 
and dream at the same time. There was a study done to find out how creative thinking that is using both your imagination and practical analytical skills helps you in coming up with a better solution. This study was called the Rainbow Project where students in the test group were trained to think using creative methods. These students received higher final grades in the college course as compared to the other set of students who were taught with traditional methods. Use it or lose it. If you always use a car to reach your destination or say you use a Segway to commute even short distances and totally stop walking, what do you think will happen? You would probably spend very less physical energy. But this will have an adverse impact on your health since it will weaken your physical state and you may put on weight. Your overall health will decline as a result of the body not having any exercise. Similarly, if your brain doesn't get enough exercise, it will not be in top shape, never mind improving it. The brain needs exercise as well. If you don't use your cognitive and logical skills, how do you expect the brain to be in its prime state? The point Kuwatsky is trying to make here is something that may not go down well with many gadget addicts. She's basically asking us to dump a few modern day technological conveniences and do things the hard way. A case in point, using your memory rather than using GPS makes your brain work much harder. The same way, trying to learn a new language rather than using translation software is much tougher but nevertheless, it gives your brain that much needed exercise that it needs to make those neural connections. As we said earlier for the physical state, the less we exercise our body, the more unhealthy we become. The same holds for the brain as well. So we need to lose a few of our technological advancements and try to rely on our brain a little more. There are times when using technology is necessary, but there are occasions when it is better to say no to shortcuts. So say goodbye to spell check and autocorrect and stop googling everything that you don't remember. Try to retrieve it from your own memory. Your brain will be in a better shape. This is the final tip from Ms. Kuwatsky for maximizing your brain potential and that is socializing and networking with other people. Being social brings you in contact with other people and you share your thoughts and perspectives with each other. Even if the socializing is through electronic medium like say Facebook or Twitter, you still come across new ideas and new situations. People who are from a different field will always provide a fresh insight to see problems which you may not have thought of yourself. And learning is all about taking in new information in ways that are meaningful. Meeting and networking with other people is one of the best ways for that. If you are looking for ways to seek out novel situations, ideas and environment, then networking is the answer. So those were five tips to make your brain sharper and make you smarter. In conclusion, if you put yourself in a lifestyle of constantly striving to maximize your cognitive potential and setting the bar higher every time you surpass it, then amazing things can be possible. There is supporting research data that shows the teaching methods involving a mix of the five approaches I mentioned in this video has had profound positive effect on cognitive growth. So why not adopt them in school systems and try to shake up the education system a little bit. After all, intelligence isn't just about what grades you got in maths or English. It is about approaching a new problem, understanding the various aspects of the problem and solving it, and then taking the same knowledge even further to solve the next more complex problem. Isn't education about putting to use your innovation and imagination to make the world a better place? Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope I provided you with some interesting information. If you feel the same, then please give the video a big thumbs up. Also share and subscribe to the channel for my future videos. A big shout out to Ms. Andrea Kuwatsky. This video has heavily borrowed from an article in scientificamerican.com. For those who want to read her detailed essay on this topic, I have put a link in the description below. As always, thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon.